I'm Hartley Fleshaw. This is Active Radio. When we come back, uh, Lowell celebrates Kerouac, and we will have one of the people who will be prominent in that celebration coming up this very uh, this very time. Uh, Brian Hassett will tell us about uh, what he has planned, and it's a big thing for Lowell Celebrates Kerouac. I'm Hartley Plushaw. This is Active Radio. This is WCAP, where everybody gets it. We'll be right back. Red robins with saffron scarlet or orange red breasts make a racket in the dry dead car crashed tree Neil mentioned. He went out the road into eucalyptus, and it's all busting out, indicating the prune blossoms. And Bodhidharma came from the India West to seek converts to his wall gazing. Ended up with Zen magic monks mopping each other. And one and all and other in mud koan puddles to prove the crystal void. Wow. <laughs> wow indeed. That was the legendary voice speaking the legendary words of Jack Kerouac, Lowell, Massachusetts native Jack Kerouac, and has been the case for a great many years now. Lowell is doing its annual celebration of the immortal leader of the beat generation, Jack Kerouac, and we are most happy to be joined by one of the people who is contributing uh, something very important to this celebration, uh, Brian Hassett. Brian, welcome. Thank you, Hartley. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Listen, uh, we don't have a whole lot of time left, so let's get right to it. Why are you here in Lowell? Because I know you're from Toronto. Uh, and what will you be doing uh, to, uh, to celebrate uh, the one and only Jack Kerouac? Right, right on. Um, love to be here. Um, so the show is called uh, Jack on Film, and it's uh, it's going to be at the Luna Theater on Sunday at six, uh, the, in Mill Number Five. And uh, what I've done is found every uh, interpretation of Kerouac uh, ever on film, on the big screen or the small. So there's, um, you know, we've got uh, uh, clips of the performances of the actors portraying Jack in everything from major motion pictures like The Subterraneans or On the Road or Big Sur to uh, quirky TV appearances, including Saturday Night Live and Quantum Leap, uh, and then homages like um, Route 66. Uh, and then actually uh, some really cool finds are a couple of sizzle reels. Uh, and those are uh, short films that filmmakers make to try to entice uh, financing. And two of them have been made. One uh, that I found that I've tracked down. So there's actual footage of this stuff um, is uh, an interpretation of subterraneans. The, the one Hollywood did in 1960 was absolutely abysmal. Um, and then some German filmmaker was attempting to make an adaptation in 2013. And then, you know, the actor, he's kind of a Hollywood A-list actor, Billy Zane, uh, oh, yeah. famously in Titanic and a bunch of other movies. He d in, uh, portrays Kerouac in what was going, you know, a, an attempt at a movie, a sizzle reel, a sort of sales pitch trailer um, clip. And he actually gives it, you know, a phenomenal performance of Jack r reading in The Hungry Eye in 1959. So there's this whole span of, like I say, major motion pictures that played on the big screen to um, sizzle reels that have never really been seen outside of, um, you know, pictures to to uh, movie studios and uh, and TV shows that broadcast nationally. So it's a super wide range of portrayals of uh, Lowell's hometown hero. Let me ask you this, and I don't mean to prejudice <laughs> you here because I know it took a lot of hard work to put all this together. I don't want to sound uh, uh, negative here, but in your opinion, uh, did any of the films made about Kerouac, be they uh, – be they documentaries or, or feature-length dramatic films, did they really do him justice? Did they really help to portray the essence of the man? Oh, yeah. Um, so, well, two things. Um, one, um, the most recent film, Big Sur, 
made by Michael Polish, who will be joining us tonight, actually, via Zoom at the uh, at the Luna Theater. Uh, he made Dur- uh, Big Sur 2013, and he 80% of the dialogue the audience hears is reading Big Sur. So almost the entire movie is Kerouac's words telling the story, and then the filmmaker has, you know, filmed the visuals. So that's a tremendous direct, um, uh, you know, accounting or portrayal or interpretation of Kerouac. Um, and then, uh, of course, there's Pull My Daisy made in 1959 with, uh, you know, that, that Jack himself actually narrates. So those are two that are really, you know, s- super accurate to his uh, work. Uh, and then the other thing that one will see when you see this is this um, really kaleidoscopic collage of different performances spanning 50 years. So you get, you know, a, a, a Jean-Marc Barr uh, or a, a Sam Riley is a pretty big famous actor or Jack. These are the recent ones or Jack Houston, who's uh, John Houston's uh, grandson, uh, portraying Jack in, in the 21st century. And then you go back and, and you've got Keanu Reeves or John Belushi or John Hurd or George Pappard portraying Jack in like the 90s or 80s. So you see this 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 uh, range of actors um, portraying him, you know, from, you know, almost the black and white days to our times today. And but in those collective collage, in that seeing all of that arc of those performances, you really get you get um, a cinematic interpretation of the guy. Indeed. Uh, whenever I uh, think of Jack Kerouac, my fellow Merrimack Valley native, I'm always happy to uh, to bask in someone else's reflected glory. Um, I think uh, when he was alive uh, and when he was actually writing and publishing his books and, and poetry, uh, he was by no means a, a universally revered figure. Um, he, he faced a lot of criticism and a lot of downright abuse. And now we look back and, uh, you know, he's, he's in death, sadly and ironically and tragically. He's become a much more respected, admired, and even loved figure uh, than he was in life. And I, my own personal opinion is that the rest of the world eventually kind of caught up to him, him and his, he, and, he and his visions and, and his, his writing style, which I think uh, inspired a lot of other people. I, I can definitely trace uh, Kerouac uh, to, uh, to people who came later, people like Hunter Thompson, for example. Uh, right. This, this, this uh, uh, letting go of convention and just writing whatever was going on in your head. Uh, and I was just wondering, uh, since you're obviously one of Jack's biggest admirers, uh, when you look back on the way he has been uh, celebrated through the years, particularly since his death, what is your take on that? Well, um, yeah, I've lived through that for the last, you know, 45 years. Um, In uh, 1982, uh, I went to buy, I was in the, the cool neighborhood of Vancouver and went to buy a copy of On the Road for my girlfriend's sister who was turning 18 and uh, it could not even find On the Road in a bookstore uh, in 1982 was how out of fashion he was and I had to keep going to bookstore after bookstore and finally and I got into the sixth one um, there was this huge poster for On the Road the Kerouac conference in Boulder that had Ken Kesey and Abby Hoffman and Timothy Leary and Burroughs and Corso and everybody was there. And I wrote a book about it called The Hitchhiker's Guide to Jack Kerouac, which is a great adventure book about discovering this guy back when he was less than popular. Um, and why it's kind of continued to catch on and, and, and gain more and more fans and readers and respect is because of the quality of the work. And, you know, he may have been disparaged in some places because 
he was um, he was discouraged by the lack of respect that he was getting for his writing and drank a little bit too much. And so his personal interactions with some people were not great. But so as those memories have faded, the words that he wrote on the pages in the books, there are currently, if you go to Amazon, over 50 different books written by Kerouac, different books uh, that you can buy. So he was an unbelievably prolific, died at age 47, and the work is what's raising his level of respect. Uh, in the regrettably brief time we have left, Brian, I'll put this to you. What drew you to Kerouac? Well, it was that sense of, it was the two twofold thing. It was the sense of adventure that he was going off and, you know, sort of hopping trains and hitchhiking across the country and going to jazz clubs and meeting girls and having this whole terrific adventure. But it was how unbelievably poetically beautiful it was. Like that clip you just played with Steve Allen backing him up. I mean, that's beautiful poetic prose. And uh, so, uh, you know, you just can't read that anywhere anywhere else uh, in a mass way. Like some people write some great paragraphs or pages or essays, but Kerouac has got it book after book after book, you know, romanticized. He, he paints beautiful pictures of our world in a beautiful way. And, you know, just like I love Van Gogh, you know, I, I, I love to experience beauty through the eyes of another artist. Indeed. Well, Brian, uh, once again, tell us uh, uh, what's going to happen and when uh, in, in your contribution to celebrating Jack Kerouac here in Lowell. Yeah, so it'll be tomorrow night at 6 o'clock sharp. Uh, doors open at 5.30 at the Luna Theater, which is a gorgeous theater. If you haven't been to it, my goodness, you should go. It's on the fourth floor of Mill Number 5 there at uh, 250 Jackson Street. And, uh, and so we're going to show uh, 18 different performances, uh, interpretations of Jack. Uh, spanning about three hours and in the last hour we're going to have the director of the very best film ever made of Jack, Big Sur, is going to join us for an hour and, and just jam Jack and take questions and talk about how you take something from the page and put it on the big screen and I, I, just, I love that process of the interpretation of art, taking it from one medium to another. Indeed. Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. You're always welcome back here to Lowell. Uh, keep uh, keep coming back. Okay, you. Hartley, I look forward to it. I'm Hartley Plushaw. This is Active Radio. We'll talk again next week.